The shores of Manila, the site of a bloody campaign. These slums, once gripped by fear and death, where thousands were killed. The former president, Rodrigo Duterte, called it a war on drugs. Here they call it a war on the poor. At the height of Duterte's crackdown, the bodies on the streets piled up, killed by vigilantes and police. There is far less bloodshed now, but it hasn't gone away. It's just harder to see. Hey, my friend. Hey, yo. Violence was part of daily life here, and the streets still talk. In the shadows, we meet a hitman. It may be quieter these days, but he claims corrupt police still want guns for hire. Who's asking you to kill? The police give me an envelope with the money and the photo of the subject. I'll get between 20 and 30,000 pesos per head. Are you saying that the police are requesting direct hits on people? Yes. The police will give me the orders and after I kill the target, I throw the gun away. I shoot them three times in the head because if the target survives, they could identify me. It's been called a war on the poor. Do you have any kind of guilt about what you're doing? I've got a lot of kids and I always have to scavenge just to feed and support my family. I want to stop killing but I'm given the direct order and if I don't complete the job, I'll be killed. How many people do you think you've killed? 14. He says this is his other job, scavenging. He makes less than four pounds a day, sifting through rubbish. Killing, he says, gets him up to 400. We can't independently verify his claims, and the police did not respond to our request for comment. They have, though, denied any wrongdoing in the drugs war, a conflict that's left its mark here. You know, when I say I shoot them dead, I'd prefer to shoot them in the heart or in the head. As at the end of the problem. Duterte's era was marked by alleged extrajudicial killings of suspected drug dealers and users. He denies ordering them and claims the police acted in self-defense. Now Sky News can reveal investigators from the International Criminal Court have visited the country to probe possible crimes against humanity. We understand an arrest warrant for Duterte could be issued within the next six months. The current Philippine president, though, says he won't lift a finger for the investigation. Saints of God come to their aid, hasten to meet them, angels of the Lord. Father Flavi is part of a hunt for justice. A gunman or gunmen would kill a father while he was even holding his four-year-old daughter. It was so frightening that the killings, such killings would took place amidst children. It was so callous that after the killings, the killers would even feast on the meals that the family left behind. He's been exhuming the bodies of victims whose families can't afford to rent their graves anymore. And it's unearthed unexpected new evidence that could be critical. Are you worried that violence is still an issue? The killings might have abated, it might have reduced, but the killers are still at large. Before cremation, he brings the dead here to be examined. Majority of the cases I see have perimortem gunshot wounds to the head, which is what you would typically say execution style, quote unquote. Dr. Raquel Fortune has inspected 94 bodies and discovered big inconsistencies. I have seen uh, death certificates where uh, a doctor somehow signed it out as a natural death pneumonia, sepsis, myocardial infarction, 
and yet he was really shocked. Zara's lease lost two sons, Alman and Dickley, six months apart. Their exhumed remains are now in urns, in the home she shares with nine of their children. She claims her sons were killed unlawfully. Police say they were drug suspects and that Dickley fired first. You buried two sons just six months apart. What impact has that had on your life? Gabby. It's difficult for me. Duterte has no pity. He's not helping the people. If I didn't take care of my grandchildren, they would just end up as scavengers. If their parents were still alive, their children would be able to go to school. Some people say Duterte made the Philippines safer. No, everyone was put in danger. He's an animal. He has no heart, no mind, no soul. He didn't even think about those that would be left behind. The clampdown on drugs brought prisons to breaking point. Mandaluyong Jail built a new facility to prevent overcrowding. Well, this is the legacy of a brutal war on drugs that isn't over yet. Around 80% of the prisoners here have been charged with drug offences. Some say they are simply the innocent victims of a bloody and cruel reign of terror by former President Rodrigo Duterte. His successor promised a more humane approach, launching a rehabilitation program. Here, many say it's helping. Do you think the current president is taking a better approach? Yes, of course. There's a lot of innocent people dying in the uh, administration of Duterte. Even the poor people uh, is getting jailed. In the administration of uh, Marcos, is uh, not, uh, not like uh, Duterte style. To his supporters, he was the strong man, savior, who tried to stop the Philippines becoming a narco state. Now, he might get help from a government refusing to play ball with the ICC, but it's a court he can't control. Cordelia Lynch, Sky News, Manila, in the Philippines.